Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today I'm updating my top five best CPUs list as it has been a little over six months now since I last made an update. Naturally though, I have been holding off in the hope that AMD would release more Ryzen 5000 series CPUs, namely the non-X models, and I also hoped that availability would improve. Of course, neither of those things has happened, so with many of you asking me which CPU you should buy right now, and many of the picks from the previous video uh, being no longer valid, I thought it was time I made an updated version. Now, it is worth noting that unlike previous top five best CPU videos, in this one, I won't always have the luxury of recommending what I believe to be the best product. Rather, in many cases, I'll be recommending the best product that you're able to buy now. So technically, this is a top five best CPUs that you can buy right now. Doesn't quite have the same ring to it, but hey, at least I'm still able to make the video. The next top five best GPUs video will probably be delayed until sometime in 2023. So with that depressing thought, let's get into the picks. Starting with the best budget CPU. Back in June of 2020, I recommended the Ryzen 3 3300X, or if you required integrated graphics, the Ryzen 5 3400G. Now the 3300X, that turned out to be admittedly a bit of a bad choice given that it went out of stock at all major retailers uh, the following month, the month after I released that video, and then it never returned, at least not in a significant quantity. The Ryzen 5 3400G was and still is the best option for those of you after an affordable CPU with a strong GPU, or at least as strong as iGPUs get on the desktop right now. So if you are looking to game on integrated graphics, my condolences by the way, the 3400G is still the best option. As for the best budget CPU, you can scrap the Ryzen 3 3300X and 3100 given they simply don't exist. AMD was really never in a position to sell that many of those parts as they were essentially selling defective silicon that couldn't be used to make say a 3600 or 3700X for example. Therefore, once they burnt through the stockpile of defective dyes, they weren't willing to sacrifice perfectly good silicon that could be used in higher end products with larger margins, just so they could put those cheaper Ryzen 3 models on shelves. So as I see it, there's really only one option available to budget buyers, and that's the Core i3-10100 at $115 US. In terms of gaming performance, it matches the more expensive Ryzen 5 1600 AF, which costs about 40% more right now. And although the Ryzen processor is faster for productivity, I still don't think it's worth the premium. Plus, once you get up to $160 US, you're up around Core i5 10400F territory, and we're about to look at that part in a moment. It's actually been four years since I recommended an entry-level Intel CPU, the last one being the Pentium G4560 back in 2017. Didn't age particularly well that CPU, but it was dirt cheap at the time and good value, something to tie you over a relatively short term. Now, given that the choice I'd go with right now would be the 3300X, but that part is MIA, uh, the Core i3-10100 wins by default. So I guess good job Intel. Uh, providing stock was really all it took to win this category. You'd no doubt love to hear that the Ryzen 5 5600 for $200-ish dollars is the best value all-rounder, but this is 2021, so no such luck. Paying $300 for the 5600X just isn't a good idea in my opinion, even if stock was available. And frankly, if you want to pay that much for a six core 12 third processor, just get something like the Core i5-10600K and it's about $30 cheaper as well. If you're after the best value all rounder, it still has to be the Ryzen 5 3600, the same pick from the last two updates in this series, going back as late as 2019. Alternatively, the Core i5-10400F is also a solid choice that's really only let down by the need for a Z series motherboard if you want to use memory that's clocked higher than DDR4-2666. Basically, the Core i5-10400F and Ryzen 5 3600 are pretty even in terms of value, so it really comes down to pricing in your region, and not just for the CPUs, but also the motherboards, so be sure to do a full cost analysis before taking the plunge. For those of you in the US or Australia, the Ryzen 5 3600 generally comes out on top thanks to better quality affordable motherboards and a superior upgrade path offering 12 and 16 core processors. Thank you. 
best value productivity CPU? Well, obviously that's either the Ryzen 9 5900X or the 5950X at $550 and $800 respectively. Of course, neither are in stock at the time of making this video, and for months now availability has been sketchy. Well, really ever since release. So in short, you should be on the lookout for either of these parts, but if hitting refresh at your local retailer's website isn't your idea of a good time, which I can't imagine it is, then you're kind of out of luck right now. The alternatives being the previous generation 3900X slash 3950X or the outgoing Core i9 10900K, though I'm not quite sure how the upcoming 8 core 11900K is going to replace the previous generation 10 core part for productivity tasks. Unfortunately, we won't have any more information on that for a few months yet as it's slated for release in March. It is unlikely that an 8 core Intel Rocket Lake CPU will challenge AMD for the productivity crown. So really the option here is to pay full price or in some cases a slight premium for an old Zen 2 processor or hold out and try your luck at snapping up one of the newer Zen 3 models. Not terribly helpful I know, but that is the situation right now. So you want the best performance CPU for gaming. Well, that would either be the Ryzen 7 5800X, Ryzen 9 5900X or 5950X, or the Core i7 10700K, or Core i9 10900K. So there are quite a few of what are considered to be the best performance uh, CPUs. They're all very similar in terms of gaming performance and with games not really requiring more than eight cores, especially cores as powerful as what we're seeing in these processors, your best value high-end options really would be the 5800X or 10700K. The 5800X is hard to recommend given that the 5900X is technically a much better value part, but if you're just gaming, I guess those extra cores are kind of a waste of money anyway. That said, you probably don't need to worry about that either as buying a Ryzen 5000 series processor is only slightly easier than buying a current generation GPU. So for gamers wanting to build a high-end gaming PC right now, the easiest choice to get your hands on is either the Core i7 10700K or if you've got a bit of extra cash to splash then the 10900K. The sensible choice though is of course the 10700K for $380 US, but again if money is no object then the 10900K for $520 will probably be more desirable. If 16 cores won't cut it, or you need more lanes than Interstate 10, then AMD's Threadripper is probably what you're after. However, AMD are yet to announce their Threadripper 5000 series, and that means you will be limited to Zen 2 models, which include the 64-core 3990X, the 32-core 3970X, and the 24-core 3960X, all of which are beasts in their own right. Previously, I chose the 3990X for, well, obvious reasons. It's the most extreme with 64 cores, 128 threads, and as such, it costs the most at just shy of $4,000 US. Unfortunately though, like many products, it is currently out of stock and has been difficult to purchase at the MSRP for quite some time now. Unless you want to pay scalpers prices, and you absolutely shouldn't, then the 3990X is off the table. That means the most extreme desktop CPU that's currently available right now is the 3970X, which can be had for around $2,070 US, and that's about $70 US over the MSRP, but by today's standards, that's not too bad. And it's certainly nothing like the $700 to $1,000 US over the MSRP that you'll pay for the 64 core model. Anyway, if you're after the most extreme desktop CPU, it is quite clearly a third gen Threadripper model. Well, that's where we are in early 2021, and dare I say it, things can only improve from this point. Quite interestingly, I wrapped up my previous top five best CPU video by saying how great it was to see so many options available in 2020. Whether you're talking about AMD or Intel, I don't think you can go too wrong. And keep in mind that was relatively early in 2020. And since then, the level of competition has only improved but unfortunately stock levels haven't. So we're sort of stuck in this weird situation where you want a current generation CPU, but you simply can't get one, forcing you to pay full price for something from last season's lineup. There is some hope that things will improve soon. The seven nanometer shortages can't go on forever and Intel's 11th gen series might help alleviate some of the demand in a few months time. 
As a side note, when I made the last update in this series, the Ryzen 5 3600 was the number one bestseller over at Amazon, with the bestseller from Intel's 10th gen series way down in 15th position, and that part was the Core i5-10400. Interestingly, at the time of making this video, the Ryzen 5 3600 is still the number one bestseller on Amazon, followed by a grossly overpriced 5800X, and then a grossly overpriced 5600X. The good news for Intel, however, is the fact that the 10400 has made its way up to fifth position, just ahead of the much more expensive 3900X. The bad news for Intel being that that's the only 10th gen core part to make it into Amazon's top 10 bestseller list. Anyway, I hope this video has been useful for those of you who have been forced into buying a CPU right now. Of course, on that note, if you can hold off, I suggest you do so, as Intel will have their Rocket Lake processors out in the wild sometime in March, and that should shake things up quite a bit, and availability of those Intel parts should also be quite good as well. And that's going to do it for this one. If you liked the video, you know what to do. You can also subscribe for more Hardware Unboxed content, and if you would like to join the Hardware Unboxed community, then you can do so over at Floatplane or Patreon. The link for those are at the top of the video description, and that'll get you access to stuff like the monthly live stream that Tim and myself get together and do, Q&As, behind-the-scenes videos. I'm building a new studio at the moment, so I'm doing the odd behind-the-scenes video about that. Uh, what else? We've got our private Discord server. Very cool community over there. Anyway, if you're interested, the links for that stuff are in the video description. If not, perfectly fine. And I would like to just thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.